Tier Wolf for United, WFC. Hello and welcome to All For United with me, John Foster, MUFC. Got Natalie with us tonight. How are you doing, Nat? You okay? Buzzing, mate. Buzzing. And Emma, thank you very much for coming on. How are you keeping? You okay? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. No, thank you for coming on. I know we arranged it about three weeks ago and uh, <laughs> we didn't know what was going to happen uh, at the time. But um, yeah, brilliant. Look, uh, so much we want to get into today. Um, obviously, we want to talk about the match, but we also want to talk about what we've seen on Twitter today as well. Um, booing, is that abuse or not? Um, I think the majority of Twitter pretty much says, no, it's not abuse, but obviously, we will get into that in a little bit more detail and get in the comments, let, let me know your thoughts. We want to talk a bit about our managers as well, uh, Skinner and Taylor, coming under a bit of scrutiny um, this, this season so far. Um, so, I want to get Emma's opinion on Gareth Taylor as well. Um, and of course, just our season so far, really. Um, I don't think either of us have had it great, um, but we want to dissect that today. So um, let's start off with booing then. So obviously, woke up today, Twitter, this, that and the other. Certain Man City fans, not all of them, a very small minority of Man City fans uh, have basically come out and said that booing is abuse. Me personally, I don't agree with it. I don't think a lot of journalists uh, agree with it. I didn't know that it was actually abuse to boo someone. Um, I've never seen Boris Johnson give a five o'clock speech at night saying you can't boo at a football game. But I understand that some people are a little bit sensitive, but it's a football game in my opinion. Um, we'll get into it. I know all the comments are going to be there. So, Nat, I just kind of hear your I can't comments. help it. I can't help it. I know it's, I don't, I know. it's just because things, we just... I've just been on the radio with uh, Gaz, Gaz Drinkwater, big Man United fan. I know Natalie Pike's on there, everyone who knows City. You know, they do a show, it's called Talking Balls, uh, 6 till 7, Radio Manchester. And obviously they talked about this. They talked about the whole game, but they talked about this. And obviously uh, City fans were saying, uh, the two girls that were City fans, one of them was a commentator as well and the, and the presenter. And they just said, you know, it's not abuse. It, it's part of football. It's what... You know, if anything, they were saying it's good to sort of hear because it shows how passionate United fans are. Uh, they said it's good to see from City side saying it because it shows how passionate they are, I suppose. Um, but like Gaz was saying, we want it to be like, you know, obviously it's maybe not right. But if we want it to be this big thing and want it on BBC and want it on Sky and want more people to come, sort of sitting there and saying booing is abuse is going to put people off from coming because they're going to think, well, there's no point me going down there if, if I can't, you know, get in under the skin and do this and have that fire that is a derby. That derby was, you know, when she was going into the corner, Alex, and she was getting that boo, that was like, you know, fire in my belly, you know? And I'm sure it's fire in her belly, and that's what it's about. You want that tension between the two sets of fans, between the two players. Uh, you want that passion. So, for me... I don't, I don't know. I could come up with all kinds of reasons why they thought it was abuse. I mean, like I said on the radio, they were saying it's just them wanting to defend the player. But then I, I look at it and think, well, I've been in a situation where I've seen our players abused. Oh, well, not even abused. I've seen our players given loads of stick, being told shit. You know, when you kick the ball, it was Siobhan Chamberlain. She used to kick the ball and it was against Crystal Palace. And they went, ah, your shit. You know, that kind of thing. And I thought, come on then. And I just started to sing her name, stood up. Me, it was about five of us who had a car. And I was like, right, get singing Shivy. And we were like, come on, and all that. And we were giving it them. And we were singing loud for Shivy. And at the end, she was like, come on, you know? Because she heard them fans singing her name. And I don't know why, if they were all so upset over Greenwood getting booed, why weren't singing her name louder? Why didn't make you stand up? Why didn't put... Because when I hear my players getting a bit of stick, it puts that p passion inside me and I want to stand up and sing for them. So, you know, I don't know. I, I'd love to hear just what both of you think and definitely the comments, see what they say. Um, I'd just like to come out first at the start because I think I'm probably going to have a similar mindset to you, Nat, and then obviously maybe we can, Emma can put like a different spin on it if uh, or whichever spin you want to put on it. Uh, um, but yeah, just, just for myself, I mean, you, you mentioned that and that's exactly it. I don't think Alex Greenwood would have had sleepless nights thinking every time I get a corner kick, I'm going to get booed. If she's, I, I think, personally, she'd probably revel in it, especially if she got a winner. 
you know that that's the whole for me that that adds the adrenaline you know you want rival fans to dislike you because when you get that winning goal you can celebrate as a like, yeah i've got one over on you even that leicester player like two years ago when they scored that one goal against us come over it's just us you know that's part of it you know um so yeah for, for me obviously it's not abuse i think some of the journalists out there have summed it up better than we could um in a, in, in a couple of sentences there is a difference between um booing and abuse and if i'm honest i'm not going to like name names but some of the city players some, sorry, some of the city fans that was coming out to that stadium and some of the city fans what i've seen on twitter have actually given more abuse to their manager than what we did to alex greenwood all we was doing was booing but some of the things that sit oh, i was over here in the pub and coming out, the city, uh, coming out the ground yesterday some of the things that i was saying to each other about gareth taylor that was abuse Booing uh, a player, an opposing player, to me, he's just pantomime. It's, it's, it's in there. Um, Natalie, if you want to come back in on that one before Emma has a bit of a play on it. I, I, there's nothing more I can say. Obviously, you know, when it steps over into talking about someone personally and all this kind of thing, and yeah, but, and people might sit there and say, well, it was so many years ago. Yeah, but, you know, I think. I think she would have gone anywhere. She might have got a bit of stick because the way she went and all that. You know, people ain't going to forget quickly. And maybe that's how it's been in, in women's football. Oh, they always move everywhere. Well, that doesn't mean, you know, it's, it's good and it's something I want to say. So it's just, you know, Karen's sort of saying it there. She came over to celebrate. We've had so many people come over and do this and do that. And, you know, she was celebrating in front of us. Good for her, mate. But then we went and scored and we were celebrating. So then when she takes the corner, we're booing. It's just back and forth. And, you know, if she's like you say, if she's having them sleepless nights over us booing, then, you know, I think she didn't really... Um, I know she was probably the best player for them and I know we're going to get into the game, but she didn't probably have a good a game as she did uh, the first one round, maybe. And whether that was because of the atmosphere was a lot better weighted towards the Reds, I don't know, but... Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people make those comments that Vicky's saying. People are saying it's better because they're seeing more passion um, in the stand. And, you know, it's more more storylines, you know, Greenwood. And that's what we want. We want, you know, a million people watch that first one. Loads of people turned up last night. It's what we need for the women's game. Keep it going, I think. Emma, what do you think? Well, they're the, they're the moments that are made, aren't they, that you remember the diaries for? Um it's always going to be something that's going to divide opinions. Uh, for me, it's irrelevant. I think booing, I'll take it or leave it. I won't boo a player myself personally, but I'm not bothered if it's there or not, to be fair. Um, Alex Greenwood ain't going to lose no sleep over the fans booing her. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just madness. You know, there's, there's more important things going on in the world than, you know, fans booing play, players, unfortunately. Um you know, if it's a if it's abuse, I think it's a different matter, but it's not abuse. I wouldn't label it as such either. Um, and I think we just need to move on from it and accept that it it will stay a part of the women's game. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I just want to touch on something, John. I've got a big um, show coming up soon. Uh, Sandra, her name is Sandra Bohemi, I think her name is. And we're actually going to talk about abuse. Uh, we're going to talk about racist abuse. Uh, I know that... Uh, Baba G Day got a lot of racist abuse. Um, I don't know where it was for, but you know, stuff like that. It's sort of I've seen a lot of people saying that it takes away from that. And I seen when when she she didn't want to press charges because she didn't think that anything would happen. And it, it's stuff like that, you know, what we need to talk about because I feel like sometimes in the women's game maybe we're we're busy looking at this when actually there's stuff going on that needs actual attention and. In my opinion, this is nothing to do with even Alex Greenwood now. I think, you know, racism and stuff like that isn't highlighted enough in the women's game because we all know it happens, happens everywhere. But in the men's game, I think there'll be a lot of light on it. In the women's game, I don't think it's talked about enough. So definitely watch out for that show soon on a next Wednesday. Yeah, looking forward to that one. We'll just answer this question uh, and then we'll move on to the game. So um, good to hear from you the other night again, John. So uh, thanks for that, um, DM. Thank you very much. Um, so um england's number nine then so russo definitely for the future and she's on form she's being picked for the squad um <laughs> should she be number one choice at the moment or do you think we should kind of just keep it the way it is and russo just come on as a bit of a super sub maybe then blowing 
Um, Nat, do you want to jump in on that one? Or? Um, I don't know. Russo is on form and there's times that she could do better. Um, I think she should have scored when Anna scored. Um, you know, she. I don't know. I think we need to take it patiently with um, Russo. I think she's just come back. I don't want to say, oh, that's all that pressure on you and that's what I'm a bit worried about at United. I think it will still be Ellen White for a while. I mean, there's another girl that I think should be in the squad and she's not, Ebony Salmon. I feel like she should be getting her chances. I don't know why she's not. You know, I think potentially, you know, Beth England might be looking at taking that spot, but then she doesn't play enough, so should she go out on loan? I know a lot of teams want it on loan. Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult question. It's not one I'm, I'm thinking about tonight. Sorry, John. <laughs> Um, come on, Emma, what's your thoughts on that one, Maisie? Um, Interesting one. Um, I think, obviously, if you're looking at performances, recent form, then, you know, a, a question over her sort of being called up to the squad is there, and I understand that completely. But then, you know, she's been playing like a different player when she's been called up to the England squad. So, um, you know, different oppositions, different tactics, you know, different manager completely. So... You know, players are able to, managers are able to get, you know, the better out of some players. You know, we've seen that with England with the men's team. I mean, Harry Kane, you know, he's not really performing, you know, for Tottenham, but look at, you know, two attributes on the chart. So, you know, it depends what way you look at it, really. Um, I feel, still think she warrants a place within the England setup, without a doubt. But the, the talent that we've got, you know, looking ahead to the future is, is really exciting. Yeah, 100%, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's move on to, uh, to the game a little bit then. Um, what were your thoughts going into the game, Emma? Um, was you kind of a little bit nervous going into this one? Um, obviously, not the best start, um, but you was obviously in a good position in the Conte Cup at least. Um, was you kind of quietly confident that you could get a result uh, based on based on United not being at their best as well? No, <laughs> no, uh, no. I mean, you'll probably be expecting me to say that, but genuinely, I mean, I've I've got proof of conversations and private, you know, conversations that I've been having. Uh, yeah. that, you know, I I did feel a bit apprehensive heading into it. Even obviously, United looking for a for a win. You know, following recent results and the draws that you've been getting, I think it was an important one for 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 both teams in terms of, you know, getting a win and helping sort of spur on the teams and getting the confidence. I think that would have meant uh, a lot to either squad, either way, whichever way you look at it. Um, I think, obviously, the frailties that we've seen, you know, in recent performances, again, came to came to light uh, again last night, um, which is really frustrating. Um, I don't doubt the capabilities of the players as such, um, but I'm just beginning to doubt um, the manager, I think, and, and the way we're setting up tactically in terms of trying to get the best out of the, the squad that he's got available to him. Mm. Um, I didn't... It's a difficult one. I, I'm not frustrated by the loss, I don't think, as disappointing as it is. Um, you know we knew that United were going to win eventually, you know, I'm not going to take anything away from United, you know, you've been playing well and I think lots of positives, especially for you guys, especially with the way, you know, you lined up last night, you know, getting some of the youngsters in as well, it, it gives you a lot to think about in terms of going forward as well. Yeah. I, well, so much we can get into here. We'll leave yeah. Gareth Taylor a little bit and we'll talk about the managers maybe after the game, um, but just like to start to line up for yourself, um, um, I mean, obviously, probably not the best, the strongest start eleven that you could have probably chose. Um, but what what are your thoughts regarding like that starting lineup? Because we was debating our own lineup going into the game. It's a Conti Cup. We got an important match on the weekend. We had an important match a few days uh, prior to that. We want to yeah. see. We, we want to see the youth, and we was kind of happy with our starting lineup. I think it had a mixture of strength, but also um, youth. What were, what were your thoughts with, with your starting lineup? Um, well, Jess Park came in as a you know an up top striker, um, which you know that position I think has been I say shared this season. Um, Jess not really coming into the starting eleven as such, but especially not as a lone striker anyway. Um, obviously, Ellen White 
um, on the bench. I think Bunny came back into the side, but only a named on the bench uh, didn't feature. But that's reassuring to know that, you know, going forward, we've got a back in the squad. Um, Ruby Mace obviously called up in the back line. A lot of fans have been calling out, um, you know, to see Ruby start, given her preferred role, preferred position. And it's a position that we're looking to fill at the moment. Give her a chance, have a bit of faith. I think she did all right, you know. Um, despite, obviously, the goals, you know, um, there were there were, there was positives, I think, you know, to, to look forward to. But yeah, it, I think squad wise, we look relatively good and, and definitely good enough to, to get a result, I think. Mm. Just wasn't the case, obviously. Yeah. And that's your thoughts on oh, both the class 11s. My God. I was go. like, Emma, going into this game, I thought we were not battered, but I thought we were going to get beat. Um, Is that based you know, on how we've been playing now? How we've you? been playing, yeah, yeah. How we've been playing. Um, like what Emma says, there was 13 internationals, I think, in um, City's squad. So it's, well, yeah, squad or I don't know. I think they had everyone was an international pretty much, maybe not Jess Park. Um, you know, we have, we have internationals in there, but obviously, you know, he, he took Tooney out. We, I was a bit worried about that. He took Russo out. I was a bit worried about that because I think watching the games that we've watched, that's where the goals will come from. So I'm thinking, where else are they going to come from? We've not really seen a lot of food, so it was worrying. Not worrying, but thinking, what's going to happen there? Obviously, you know, they did play versus Durham, her and Kerry. Uh, they did well. They got their goals. But, you know, you just thought that City maybe would have a bit bit too much for us. And I thought, uh, I can see Marty in there, you know, it would be a draw. And I think... What I saw from your Fusos, from your Carrie Jones, I know we're going to go on to players, but those two, oh my God, we started off slow. And I think once we went 1 0 down, I thought, oh my God, here we go. It's going to be like Chelsea again. But those two just sort of lit it up, just came into it. Just, you know, that youth where they're not going to be told, they're just going to do what they know best. And Carrie is someone who I've always said, I think he even said it before the game, first time I ever watched her was was just after lockdown and she was playing for the development team under 23s and I said she's like Tooney she's she'll run she's Tooney 2.0 and she's playing up top with Martha Thomas and I do like Martha Thomas it's a shame she came off I hope she's all right um but yeah she just had that energy she was just non-stop they could not handle her um it'd be interesting to hear what what Emma thought of Carrie because I just thought in my opinion, she was player of the match because she was just not never give up. You know, she'd win the ball in the middle and she'd run out on the wing and she'd be crossing it in. And, you know, she's just, she's going to be something. She's going to be something special. She was amazing last night. And I think Fuso as well, the way she picked up the ball and ran with it, I just thought, Woo, we've missed this. Why hasn't she been playing? And I think she thrived off the home crowd. Carrie thrived off the home crowd. Um, I think... For I think as soon as they ran out and I knew that food, so I was and I went out there like, come on, Ivana, and they just love it, and it's just it made it special. And you know, even after going one nil, the crowd was still supporting them, and I think it just pushed them through. And it was just, you know, if anything, I thought, no, 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 don't, don't bring Tooney on, don't bring Leslie on, you know, keep, keep Carrie going. Um, it's fantastic, and I'm glad she got like a standing ovation because she was. Like I said, for me, I know we're going to go on to it and all that kind of stuff, but she was the player of the match. She was amazing. Yeah, um, um, I, I know that you, you was watching it uh, on the FI player and you probably haven't seen much of Carrie uh, yourself. But... <laughs> no, I didn't. What a load of crap that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's like just being punished for not going to the game. I knew I'd regret it as soon as, uh, as, soon as it kicks off. Um, great experience, you know, for her. Yeah. Um, didn't know much about her, in all honesty, in the, obviously until she was sort of out on the pitch. And, you know, you, you see a player like that lighting up the pitch and you're just like, go on. You know, you kind of look at, you know, players like that and you think they've been given an opportunity and they're really living up to it. Um, I, that's This is what we're lacking at City. Um, him, Gareth Taylor, just having a little bit more faith, putting her arm around some of the younger ones and just saying... Right, go and see what you can do. And they have their opportunity and and you have to applaud them for the effort. Um, and that's exactly what she did for you last night. Uh, really good. I thought she played well. And um, yeah, really good good moments of play on the ball. 
Yeah, I, I have to agree. Um, I, I just think we've, we lined up very attacking as well. So, with obviously Fuzo's pace as well, which I mean, we'll talk about Fuzo next. But I just think that, that from the midfield forward, we had the creativity of Balwisa. We had Lucy Stan, who's more of a number 10 anyway. Martha Thomas, um, Fuzo, Cammy, and um, Hansen. We had six players there who was all capable of like scoring or creating. And I think it was a quite a bit of a bold move, really, um, because we, we could have thought to ourselves, right, let's make it a bit tighter uh, and this, that, and the other. And at the time, we played like a 4 4 2. So Fuzo was up, up front as well, which I've never seen us ever play. And, and, it, and it worked uh, yesterday. Um, I don't know the reason behind it. I'm sure if we look, if we look back and we start analysing some of the tactics and why that worked, um, we, we can do that. But yeah, I was really impressed with. I think it was all for all of that one six to be honest. Um, mm. we got to see obviously Fuso. We missed it didn't we, that um last Wednesday played against Durham, but um, mm. everyone said how fast she was uh, in that game, and we actually saw that speed yesterday. First we, hand, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was first half, I couldn't believe it the way she just ran. And I just thought, no one took her, let's take her out. And I thought, where's this been? Please, if this is what this girl can do, why has she not been playing? Mm. Uh, or why she not been coming on as a sub? You know she's showing it now. I want to see it. That's it. Game changers. I think Connor even said how many game changers we've got now. And for me, I think bring on Carrie, bring on Fuso, especially Fuso. The way she can run at them players, like. And the thing is though, it was in tight areas where she was running. So she's running mm. through the middle. It's tight areas, and then they had to take her out. Bang! There's a free kick. You know what we're waiting yeah. for? I don't I don't understand. You know, this is what this guy, you know, I think he, I think me as a fan, I just look at it from my perspective and I think probably people will agree. I don't care. If I see then a Carrie and a Nirvana and, you know, whatever, whoever, little Neve Murphy or someone like a little kid come on and do, you know, even if they don't do well, I don't care. I just want to see it. I know people then say, oh, but if you lose, yeah, but I'm, I remember I saw Rebecca May's debut and we drew against Reading and I was so angry that we drew against Reading, but I was so happy that Rebecca May got on and made a debut. So it just sort of neutralised it out for me and I just thought, oh, well, but Rebecca May made a debut, so it's great. And that's what I want to see more of because these kids, they don't, you know, not, it's so raw. It's so, mm. the passion is in them. Even you off know, the pitch? Could, yes. Even off the pitch when she grabbed the mic, oh, no, badge. That is what we need, man. She needs to run it. She needs to run the whole thing, you know, and carry, I said, 2.0. And then people say, oh, well, she's carry. Yeah, 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 she's carry. But if, if I describe a Tooney, it's like Tooney. And Tooney, Tooney's like sort of trained the game now a bit. And Tooney's more in the spaces and doing that. Whereas Tooney just used to run at everyone. And it didn't matter if she won it or not. She used to run at everyone. She still does. But she's like sort of tailored the game a bit more and she stepped it up and she's looking at a different class now. But that's why, and I just can imagine Tooney saying, yeah, 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 this is what I used to do. Because I just look at her and just think, you are the same person, you know? You are the same style of player and I love it. I can't wait to see them two together. Um, we'll answer that um, question on the screen shortly, John. Um, but yeah, just I mean, just finishing up with Fuso, obviously, everything after the game as well. She's so excited. She's been waiting for this for a long time to meet the fans. And obviously, obviously she's met you uh, a few weeks ago on that. But just, just everything about her is energy. And mm. she really wants it, doesn't she? And that's what you saw on the pitch. Not just Fuso, pretty much the whole team yesterday, which was nice to see. Uh, obviously, when she scored the goal, she ran over to the bench. Don't know what that means, but it was nice to see. Um but yeah, no, I think she's forcing her way in. So she's only really had two proper games. She played really well in both games, scored in both games, um, creating a bit of a spark in the fan base, which is what Skinner would love. Um, she, she could po possibly force her way in, not as a number 10 because two is there. But if one of the wingers doesn't perform, you know... Rotate it, rotate it. Why not? Because Therefore, and that was our problem as well with Casey sort of... When Tooney was playing so well in the Conti that first WSL season, she never got in on the thing. But even if it's just like game changer coming off the bench more, you know, there's times when we're watching, uh, you know, even versus, and it's just dull. There's nothing going on. There's no attacking flair. And I just think, bring her on with the last 10 minutes. And if it is a 1-1, what's mm. the worst that's going to happen? 
what is the worst that's going to happen? She's going to run at some people. You know, she might not score, but if she gets taken out or this and that, and then it's, you know, winning free kicks, doing things in the, in the box. For me, I just don't understand. But maybe now we're going to see that change because she's proved it now and everyone's seen it. You know, people are going to be calling her name or he's going to have to mix it up a bit. Definitely. Um, Emma, do you want to uh, like kind of um, comment on that? Well, on screen, why he's not played Ruby, Ruby, not Ruby, Ruby, um, <laughs> as often as maybe people are expecting? You know, uh, this is a question that we've we've all been asking, uh, to be honest, John. That I can't really understand why, um, but it is when she is featured, we just sort of get behind her and, and you know, she put in a good shift last night and I think, you know, she's worthy of, definitely being in the mix for selection come the weekend as well. Um, you know, when you've got a player available to you that knows the position, that knows the role, that knows what's expected of her, what have you got, you know, what, what are you going to lose from giving her the opportunity? And she really rose to that last night and, and in other games as well where she's featured. So, you know, for me, She's definitely put in a case for herself forward um, and she can't be overlooked, in my opinion, and I think she should start. We need her. Can I just touch on the point? Do you think it was like, I know we're going to go into that comment, do you think it's like sort of what we're saying about Fuso? And it's different when you're playing in defence as well because uh, it's sort of like you're making a mistake there. It's a goal pretty much, yeah. not as bad as keeper. But do you think it's sort of like they don't want to risk it, you know, young player, 18, 19, there's no point putting yeah, them in? And I and I, and I think there's there's something on the player as well. Maybe you know um, that player wants to achieve. They don't want to let the team down. Um, and it's it's tougher to take, and isn't it? If you're 18 and you know you're at fault for an error that leads to a goal or you know a, a tactical mistake that could be costly. Um, you know these are the experiences that you've got to learn. You know learn from and use it to up your game and make you a better player. Um, those opportunities aren't coming enough for Ruby Mace, in my opinion. And you know, he hasn't done anything wrong not to warrant a place within that side. So, um, yeah, I'm just hoping from here that it doesn't knock her, um, and she continues to, to, to build as a player and grow as a player and develop. Which I think you know, she'll do well at City under the right sort of leadership. And, and you know, she's definitely got potential, and um, she's. Absolute, you know, for starters, she's she's class. Uh, she re does read the game game well, and she's got a really good work rate as well. And um, you know, that was evident last night in the game. So hopefully, again, that's enough, you know, to warrant a place within the side at the weekend, and you can just build on from there. Cool. Um, yeah, um, Bagley yesterday, I, I thought she did a, I thought she did a decent job. Um, she couldn't have done much about that goal. Um, it was nice to see her mixing it up regarding passing from out the back and then kicking mm. it long. I think she used her head wisely there. I think it was brilliant in the last 15, 20 minutes when she was counting down the clock a little bit. Um, obviously, a couple of seasons ago, we was against that from the same person. But um, no, I, I, saw, I saw she calmed things down where she could. Um, I think if I had to say criticism, I was probably a little bit scared when a cross came into the box. So I was thinking, oh, you know, can she come for that a little bit? But I know she's not as physical as Mary Earp, so she obviously done what she felt was comfortable. But yeah, I, th I thought she's done a good job. It's just that Mary Earp, she's doing so well this season, it's going to be very hard for Baggers to get in. Yeah, I thought Baggers had a good game. Like you say, there was a few little nervy things about crosses, but I did like how she kicked a lot. Um, <coughs> I think that's what we've sort of missed in a way. Kick it long, let a player win a header. Then it plays off. Then the, the second ball and, and and the wingers are running. I've not really. I mean, if anyone is on Twitter, you probably see I sort of had a had a go twice at Mark, sort of saying, "Stop with this playing out from the back. Stop playing so narrow and get on the wings." And I think we saw with a handsome with a few. So they just run, just run with the ball and forget trying to pass, pass, pass. Perfect goal. Man United, we have wing play. It's what it's what we're about. Um, and you know that was the performance that that we had last night. And I think I don't want us to slip below. Sunday's going to be a totally different ball game, but that's the sort of level that I want to see. That's the sort of pressing that I want to see. And like you say, running with the ball and wing play, we need to see more of that. Mm -hmm. Emma, can you take any like positives from what you saw yesterday in the performance, or any players that you saw? 
<laughs> oh, you're smiling. <laughs> you did go one nil up. You didn't make it easy, you know, for us. But I, I, if I'm honest, I don't think City played too great. From what I saw, I was never really scared after the first 10, 15 minutes because for, for once, I was very happy with how we played as well um, because we did manage to create a lot more chances than what we have been creating. So I don't think City was great, but I haven't really seen them as obviously as often as yourself this season. But mm. is there any kind of positives that you could take going into the weekend? No. <laughs> you <want this? laughs> uh, no. Um, listen, obviously, it was great to to get the opening goal. Um, to be honest, as quickly quickly as we did, um, you know, you hope that kind of start that would set you up for the game. Um, just obviously wasn't the case. We um, we just really struggled. You know, we talk about the frailties on the back line and that, you know, United were able to capitalise on that. Um, to be honest, I've, I have got to say, though, the foul, it was a foul on the keeper. I mean, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to debate uh, about where, rightly or wrongly whether it should have been given or not. But the reaction from the players suggested to me that it was a clear and obvious foul at look. Seen them been given, seen them not, been on the end of them, and you know, yeah. can't argue with it. This decision at the end of the day, the keeper should be doing better there. Simply, she should be smothering the ball, uh, and you know, having a good good hands on that. Um, but yeah, it was it was a bit of a disappointment, and I'm sure if it had it been the other way around, you'd have probably thought the same. To be fair, I, I just want to touch on that just briefly. Um... Mer uh, there was pictures of um, Mary with her hands on the ball versus Everton. And I think, like you say, it's about the keeper being stronger, about them maybe putting their whole body over the ball, things like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think if you just sort of have it with your hands out at front, because she did drop it. And then that's why yeah. I think that... Uh, and then she did catch it again. But I think it's like you say, isn't it? It's about... Um, maybe putting your body on top of it. I I'm not a goalkeeper coach. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, this is how you should do it. But like you say, it's about, I don't know. I just it's, think it was... It's, it's frustrating. Like you said, you've been on the end of them. We've been on the end of them. It, it, it just identifies, again, the, the fact that we need to be looking at, you know, identifying areas of improvements where we need to see an officiating, simply. Um, and... You know, we were a victim of it again the other week against Chelsea. Um, you know, I know you've had your situation, you know, the game against Everton. And I know last season you had clear and obvious, you know, situations last season too. And, you know, to be on the end of them is, you know, really difficult to take sometimes, especially in a game like that where you know it can make all the difference. And you literally are having to cling on to everything you can get. But I kind of feel the keeper... You know, she's had a, a bit of a tough job to obviously come into the side as a first choice, as a third choice, sorry, and do a first first choice job, basically. And, you know, she's had moments of brilliance, but, oh God, just not good enough, in my opinion. You know, even in the second goal as well, um, just, again, smother, smother the ball. Smother the ball. Mm -hmm. It's it's basics, goalkeeping basics. And, um, yeah, but both... Both sort of errors really led to the goals, and uh, it's it is really disappointing. Um, and just unfortunately, we we haven't really got any choice in terms of going forward. You know, we've got a youngster on the bench in Grace, and she's sixteen. You know, with with no game experience um, at a top level, um, and when you've got you know big games. It's hard, you know, there's a bit of a debate going on at the moment. Should we give her a chance? Should we give her an opportunity? It goes back down to, you know, having faith in your youngsters. You know, can they, you know, can they can they rise to the occasion again? Just a lot of questions that to be asked at the moment. And I think at the moment, heading into Christmas, you know, this is a pivotal time for us. We need to be looking to pick up all points available to us. It's, uh, you know, nine, game, uh, nine points, three games, and, and we need to be winning all of them. I just want to touch on just because I know a city goalkeeper. She, I know she's fractured her elbow now or something, but yeah, yeah, she was yeah. playing for the under 19s, and I thought she was absolutely yeah different class, world class. Like I know that's, that's a lot saying it, it's about a kid, but I know, like I said, I know her elbow's gone now. But what I saw from her 
was better than what I've seen from this one. I'm not saying that this what this keeper for City is bad, but there, there you go, putting faith in the kids. That, that kid, I think, should have had yeah. um, starts before this one. And I get you, this one is more older and experienced, but, you know, just from the little it's, games that I've seen. She's waited a long time for opportunity as well. You know, she's been at the club for two, three seasons now. And, you know, she, she was bought in at a time where, you know, we only had... Ellie and Karen and you know it was a bit of a difficult time and like I said she's waited a while and mm. she came in you know started the season you know it was great to see her in in net you know she did a good job but again it, it's I'm not putting it all on the goalkeeper because you know at the end of the day they've got to go through 10 players before you get to the keeper <laughs> you know but it's, it is just it is just frustrating and frustrating for her as well I'm, I mean no one's mm. gonna sort of evaluate their own performance like the individual that's you know doing the job kind of thing but yeah I, I would just hope for better for her come the weekend and a, a couple of really good performances behind them I hope will really spur them on. Does um, a lot of players that we could mention obviously getting that win that but uh, three players that come to mind that we just have to cut we just have to mention um, Honor obviously getting that goal Herman Fuso best mates Absolutely loving life at the moment, the way it, the way it appears uh, at United. So we'll obviously talk a little bit about Honor. Um, Mannion stepped up again, done really well. Captain again in this Conte Cup. It looks like she is a def definite deputy. And, you know, who knows where that could lead in the future. Um, and Bolvisa got some more game time as well. So I know I sent a message to Emma at half-time about Bolvisa. I don't think she started off the game particularly well, but she definitely grew into it. And she started yeah. to play some good passes, you know, over the second half. And, like, you know, after the first half of the she got that pace of the game, maybe. Um, so, yeah, great to see Bowie to start. I wasn't surprised yeah. about that. I was surprised who she started with, though. I must admit, um, mm. Lucy standing in that, in that, like, midfield. But it worked well. You know, we've got to win. That's the main thing. And that's what was your Yeah, I, I, I was surprised to see Stanley. Not, like, surprised to see Stanley, but I just think... Yeah, yeah. I don't see Stanley as a six, but it worked. And I don't know if they... Both played us. I don't even know how it worked, but it worked. Bo Risa is someone who I've mentioned since time, since we had this show. We were talking about transfers in January and her name was linked and we'd learned so much about her. We got Mia on, we were talking about her and Mia says she's just as good as any of your sort of, sort of midfielders there. It's going to add quality, it's going to add depth. And I think it's taken her a while. Yeah, and she, she started versus Reading. And yeah, I do think there was times where, you know, she she gave the ball away or she misplaced the pass. But I think that's going to happen. You know, I think the quality players are going to be trying things and you're going to see that. But there was this one ball and no Vicky and Karen, if they're in the comments, will say, and she just played it. And I thought, this is what I've missed. This is what I've missed. I watched her and thought, this is what I've missed. Because she was on like the left-hand side or the right-hand side. And she just played it, sprayed it across. And I thought, where's this been? Where's this been? This is what we need in our team. It's what we've missed. I know people love Jackie as well. And I just think, God, when Jackie's back, add Jackie Bo Risa. Oh, it's what I waited for. You know, it's what we, we were crying out for, to add something different um, versus, you know, last season when we were sort of struggling around January, we just needed that extra difference. And maybe she, you know, I'm not saying, you know, we would have got Champions League, but it's by the by that. Now she's here. She's getting into the game. She's, she, like you said, grew into it. I think for me, um, the, the crowd helped her. You know, I think the crowd helped all of them. You know, I know we talked about what we did at the start with the crowd, but that crowd pushed people because, especially going behind like that, that could have broke you, but it didn't. I think even, um, I know we're going to go on to it probably separate, but Honor, you know, I think she was getting exposed a bit by um, Janine Becky a lot down that side, but I think. She was running. She didn't stop running. That's how the goal came about, her running. I mean, I've seen someone say before, Stokes was at fault for a lot of them. And to be honest, sorry, Emma, just the way that on a run and the way Stokes bounced off her and then bang, back of the net. And I just thought, yeah. that's what it's about. Mm. That girl knows. And the thing is, what makes me laugh about it all, Leah set her off for the run. She crossed it in. It came to Russo, but she was on the left-hand side. And then she ran all the way across to that side. Demi thought she had a bit of time. No chance, mate. My my goal. My ball. Bang. Goal. On a new. And a celebration at the end. With the passion inside of it all came out. 
you know, everyone wants to see more Bowery. And then, you know, Manny and she's sort of got on the social media saying it's a privilege, it's a privilege to be the captain, it's a privilege to play in front of the fans, inject it into my veins. This is the passion that we want to see. Manny and always when she celebrates, it's mad passion. Um, I think even the Tooney goal, she like ran over like with a fist clenched, pumping the air and all this. Um, you know, I know we had uh, Emma on when we were talking about signing money and then everyone was sort of like, no, 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 we don't want her. And, you know, we were worried about her injuries and all that kind of thing. And then obviously uh, Millie's been injured coming back in January, but, you know, it's been that worry. But she's been like ever present, you know. And I know people are talking about who, you know, when Millie comes back, this and that, but... You know, Manny and she maybe had a little shaky patch in these last two games that we've had, but I think she's been, you know, last night was immense. All those three names that you mentioned at the start, immense. And I think, like I say again, I always talk about the crowd pushed them on to make them do that. And I think then adding those two youth players that we're talking about, Fuso and Kerry, they weren't going to stop. So I think then everyone picked up that energy. Um, and it was just so great to see. I loved it last night. It was it was everything and I can't wait. It was it was amazing. Really it was a really complete team performance, though. Do you know, like, United yeah. didn't play as individuals. They played together. And I think that was the difference. You know, we really struggled in that respect because you were so together. The game plan was well implemented. You used the whole of the pitch. Um, and it, it, you know, it it was difficult for us to to play out our game the way we usually would. I mean, City likes to play with the ball, likes to have a lot of possession. Just didn't work out that way. We we didn't do anything creatively at all. Um, and it, it by our standards, like recent performances, again, it, it was just another poor performance just to add into the mix. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I've just got that. Sorry, I wasn't. Really? Yeah, I've just got that uh, comment on screen. So it looks like Natalie's maybe typing that in there. Maybe I'm not too sure. My computer will crash if I'm Yeah, um, no, it's true. I've just seen it. Scott Bruce being sat from Birmingham. Um, so yeah, anyone, uh, if I don't know if Craig's watching, but yeah, he's been sacked. Mm. Um, well, it's not official, but they're all saying it. And then I've had someone tell me it could be, um, well, I don't know how true this will be, but Willie Kirk come available. Oh, could he go there? You know, he's looking for a job. Makes sense. Knows the league a lot better. Probably can work. But apparently, sort of all the issues around Birmingham haven't been resolved, which I think we knew. Um, you know, obviously he's, he's working off a limited budget, working off very, you know, kind of nothing. He's not really got great facilities. Not getting. Oh, it's official now. People are saying. Um, but yeah. Who knows? I mean, could you see Willie Kurt there? No, we're going off topic, but do you think he'd, he'd drop down? Do you think he'd want to? I don't know. To be honest, I don't think Scott Bruce should have been sat because I think they're not sitting bottom. They've at least exactly. got points. They at least, you know, I've seen them score goals. They look good versus us. Apparently, they were embarrassing versus West Ham, someone said to me, but it shouldn't matter. It's County Cup. You want to stay up um, and they're doing well in the league, I think, compared to other, compared to their sort of rivals around them. That they should, um, you should have got time, but who knows what's going on there? Yeah, everyone just want to comment on that one, but mm. uh, yeah, quite surprised to be honest. It wasn't one I was expecting to be honest. Um, I think Birmingham have the potential and should be a better team than where they are. I don't think, uh, obviously, Nats talks about the, the issues behind behind the scenes with investment with money um it's obviously playing a massive part i'd be very surprised if it's willie kirk but it would make sense um and i think if you're a birmingham fan it essentially it would be a very good appointment um but yeah obviously that's yet to be confirmed so um we'll just for the last 15 minutes we'll just touch on obviously where we stand in the contact cup and where we stand in the league so it's kind of uh, go from there and then just um, our managers uh, at the end of the show. So, Emma, start off for yourself now. Conte Cup, you're still above United, but obviously we've got that game in hand, so it is in our hands now. We've not been playing brilliantly. Obviously, that was a good game that we did see uh, yesterday, from our point of view at least. Um, I'm not 100% confident that we'll win both games, um, but Emma, I mean, do you kind of see like useless favourites because you've got that point on the board or 
where are you kind of seeing yourself uh, in the Conte Cup now? Um, hard to really say. I think at this moment in time, uh, I don't want to rely on other teams around us. Um, obviously, you guys, like you say, it's in your hands as such. Um, we've not took our opportunity and we've not, you know, won, you know, an early goal. We should be able to see out that game and capitalise more in that in that situation. It didn't happen. Didn't materialise on the night. So, yeah, um, <laughs> Every game at the moment, I'm kind of looking. Um, well, I'm not feeling as confident as a fan. I, I think that's fair to say. Um, you know, you never know. You know what you're going to get um, with some of the oppositions that we've got coming up. You know, on their day, they can be really good and get results. So it's obviously up to us to to ensure that we're doing the best we can in these situations to make sure if you know we're in the mix, we're, we're there kind of thing. So. Obviously, I'd love to see City progress, but it's the last of my worries at the moment, to be honest. Yes, yeah, so obviously, obviously, the league's on your mind more than the county. Um, yeah. But having said that, though, if, if you know that you're not going to make top three, which isn't the case just yet, by the way, I, I still see City as our biggest rival for top three because I do think at some point you will have to put a, put a one together. Um, but some of the United fans would prefer a Conte Cup final as, or come to cup win so we get a trophy more than a top three um because it's a trophy um do you reckon maybe that could be on city's mind as well you know just trying to get any kind of trophy or do you think they still think that uh, top three is still available or what's your thoughts on that one i think it's really hard to say um at the situation that we're in at the moment um top three to be honest it almost seems too far out of reach um in terms of looking at the kind of bridge, the, the gap that we've got a bridge and mm. the situation that we're in, the points that we've dropped is, is huge. So uh, we're really on the back foot. We've got a lot of making up to do in terms of points. And it's got to start somewhere, like you say. Um, and we keep saying it, but it's just not materialising, um, which is why I think this this moment, this period up until Christmas is, is really vitally important for City in terms of getting the results. Because uh, it does help us, it will help us in terms of, uh, like as I say, bridging the gap. I know I keep saying it, but um, for me, the the cups really aren't a priority. Maybe the FA Cup when we get round to it, you know, come next year. But at the moment, uh, County Cup is sort of back of my mind. Uh, I'm more worried about the points. Okay. Uh, can I talk yeah, from my perfect. United perspective? I, if we had got. Like, I didn't think we were going to have a good thought we were going to get a draw. So, I thought, get a draw means we're out of it. Um, and then it means uh, play some more kids in the in the last two games. But now I think it's in our hands. We can't mess it up. I still like want, want to see, you know, Fuso playing um, and uh, Carrie playing because I think they deserve it, you know. But I want to get through this now. I don't want to mess up. I want us to beat Everton, beat Leicester. Qualify quarterfinals go, you know, when you're on the run, it's different, isn't it? When you sort of look in and thinking, mm, we're not even gonna get get far or whatever, you think, you know, Champions League, a lot of people are saying top three is like a trophy. And I think for us, we're so close to that Champions League spot. I want us to get it. I want us, you know, I can just imagine us all going on the on a flight over to like Italy and you know, soaking in the the sun and the culture over there and how they consume women's football. I just think it would just be so great for, for you know, the game, Champions League. You know, I think, you know, we love games, like night games like that. There was quite a lot of fans there last night. There's more fans there than potentially we were at uh, Arsenal's Champions League game. So, for me, I think if we had a Champions League game, it was against the Paris Saint-Germain. I could see the, the place being packed, you know, and Paris have a load of, Ultras, and I just think that that's going to be amazing. But then I think if we had a cup run, I mean, you know, it would it would t put a lot of doubters. You know, if Mark won us a cup, it would it would bam, it would be cementing himself there. I'm United manager, I'm winning trophies. Um, but I do really, really, I think Champions League is is a big thing for me. It's probably even bigger for City because they're used to being in it. That's where I suppose you probably think Emma, you belong. I think we're just trying to break it. So. I think the we thing, need to get it. It's a strange one, that, because if I'm speaking honestly about it, 
I see it as the biggest disappointment of the season. Mm. Like, it, to have that at the start of the season, to not progress at that point, it, 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 was, it was the worst, I've got to be honest. Um, and I kind of feel that's kind of defined our season a little bit. It's it's been like the headache, the absolute headache that you just can't get rid of, and we've just not moved on from it. It just seems that we're doubting ourselves as a team. Um, and like I said, it, it, people obviously like to talk about the injuries, and and I get that, you know, they have played a part without a doubt, but we can't keep using it as an excuse. Do you know what I mean? And that's kind of almost what it feels like at the moment. Those players within that side are more than capable. You know, they're seasoned professionals and they've got enough credibility behind them to be able to be adaptable and get a result. Um, You know, otherwise they wouldn't have the reputations that they've got as individuals. So, yeah, it's massively disappointing. And this season for me is, you know, just on record, it's without doubt the worst. Um, And at what point we're going to bounce back from that, I just don't know. I'm surprised City, to be fair... um, ever allowed us to continue in this in this form in this way um uh, without sort of addressing it um but you know you he's your manager you've got to back him and that's what we'll continue to do we'll talk about uh gareth Tyler a little bit uh, on other people in the comments so probably want to be talking about it as well and skinner so we'll spend the last 10 minutes talking about those but before we b- before we do i think what city are going through now reminds me of two eras that or two periods of time that man united have, have been through um, the first, but I'll, I'll, but you've got it like twice as bad at the moment. So last January we went on that downhill spiral, and it just kept on going down, 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 and, and yeah. eventually uh, we, we dropped out of that top three. But the season ended, so we could kind of regroup. If that season hadn't have ended, if that downhill spiral started in November, who knows where we could have gone down to? Um, so you know, thankfully for us, that season kind of ended there. Um, obviously, your season's still going now. Uh, and also, one game for us has changed our mentality a lot now. So we're going to go into this Arsenal game with a slightly more positivity, looking at the fixtures, thinking, "Oh yeah, well we can we can win Villa, we can win Brighton, you know, we can win the two Conti Cup games." Forty-eight hours ago, we were thinking the opposite: we could get battered here, get battered there. We don't know what our style of play is. Our style of play isn't working. Now we've got that win against you, but if that if that win was the opposite way around, and you've got that win. Or if you get a win on the weekend or whatever, you could quite easily spin it around as well. I just think it's very fortunate as a United fan at the moment. We got that win, we got that bounce because we massively needed it, uh, and then we're on a bit of a high. And there's people in the comments and text messages throughout the day saying we're still buzzing. You need that buzz, don't you? Remember, you need that one yeah. fixture. You just need that one game just to turn it around and try and build that momentum. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, all clubs have it. You know, we're not going to be the first. We're not going to be the last. You know, you got these lulls, but it it's it seems more than a lull at the minute. <laughs> it seems like we're almost in crisis mode. Yeah. Um, you know, and it, I think without sounding like too spoiled, you kind of with City. I think with the you know the the results that we get in the rep, you know, the rep that we've got. I think we're not used to it. And I think as fans, you can't, you can't, it's an almost expectancy for some. Um, and you have to remember that this is football, you know, and you, you have these periods. Uh, and, you know, some may say it's transitional, some may say, you know, it's, it's, it's emotion, but it's, we just can't seem to shake it off. That's, that's the problem at the moment. Um, that's just, what's your thoughts on? Gareth Taylor and the management at the moment, though, from what you see, obviously we gave a bit of banter at the end of the game, um, the same way as people give us the banter as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think he's good but, enough, but obviously we sang, we want you to stay. Of course we do. We want him to stay there as long as possible. I'm surprised that, you know, he's not gone, but I'm sure maybe in the men's game, people are probably surprised that Ollie's not gone. Obviously, I don't know what it is. I don't know why. Um, it's happening. Uh, why is in a way not in a horrible way? But I, again, I was on um, the radio and they were sort of saying the surprise he's not sacked as well. And this is like you know, journal, you know, radio presenters saying why you know why is he still there? And they, they don't come out that harsh like that in the in the in the women's game, not rarely, you know. 
So the fact that they're saying it, you know that it must be sort of bad. They're talking about a lot of senior players don't believe in him. I don't think they probably ever believed in him. I've seen a lot of comments saying like Sam Mewis covered up for him. Potentially they did. You know, I, as well, I don't understand, uh, you know, Emma talked about, it's going back a bit now, but talked about that Real Madrid game. And I don't understand why, you know, they made all these big signings before it. You know, you you guys have signed Hayley Rasso, a player we, we talked about, a player we want would have fitted in nicely. Um, Alana Kennedy, you signed the girl from Sweden. I don't even know her name, uh, but I know she was good. She left Hackard to come to City and then got knocked out. It doesn't make sense. I don't understand why they signed all these players and not to play them. And it's like he sort of underestimated Real Madrid, I think. And I think it's something that I've I've talked about um, on here. We have a lot of Spanish people who watch and, you know, we had a Spanish show and sort of talking about why the Spanish league is good. And I think people just see Barcelona, don't see the rest. But that's a very yeah. underrated league. And, you know, I think potentially you figured it out. Um and I, I don't know. I don't understand. I mean, maybe you can tell me, uh, Emma, you signed these players and they would have fitted in perfectly for us. Rasso, um, what's the other one? The Australian girl and the Swedish girl. But then I don't really see any of them. Or when I see them, they're not really playing at the best or how you know they can play. What What do you think of those signings that you made? Because you made them quite towards the end. So I thought, oh, this is covering up for, you know, Rasso when Kelly's not playing, but then she's not even playing. Yeah, I mean, it was quite light, obviously, with the Kelly, uh, Chloe Kelly injury. It, it was an area that we had to look to fill. Um, I thought Rasa was a a really good signing, to be honest. Uh, and I thought she would play a, a really important part. And like you said, I, I think she has had an injury, to be fair, which is why she's not featured as much, sorry. And, uh, but, you know, she's a bright player that plays with intent. She's creative. And, you know, all the joy that City have seen, you know, in, in you know, last season, you know, in on the wings, you know, with Lom and Hemp, you know, it seems that Hemp's doing all the work, <laughs> the work at the minute. And it's, you know, she's only, she can, she can only do so much. Um, you know, he said about Ellen White, she's almost isolated herself from the game just because she's just not getting those balls that she needs. And, you know, it does become frustrating. Um but it it looks tactical to me. It's not it's not the players. Um, it's not the players for me. Um, the players are doing their best they can. Um, but it's it's just not coming together for some reason. And this is why there's so many questions being asked of Gareth Taylor. And I can't say I'm not surprised. You have to start answering the reasons why you can't get the best of this team. And you know. He's getting the media attention now. People are asking questions. If it continues, then fans are going to start questioning the club. Mm. Can I just say, and I, I, I've got a friend, a really good friend of mine, and obviously when I started to watch women's football, he started to watch a bit, but he, you know, City always had a women's team. He's sort of like a, he's got a season ticket. Well, he's not got any more. I think all the Super League put him off, but you know, he'd been going to Main Road and had a season ticket, had all loyalty part. And he did always watch and he said he thinks that they are, his personal opinion, that the, the owners, they started off all big and bright and it's what we're going to do. And they realise that there's a long, it takes more than that. Look at Chelsea, look how much money they're putting in. They're not going to do it like that. They want to see a return. Slowly, slowly we're seeing a return with, you know, Sky and BBC and all that kind of thing. But maybe they want to see more return in terms of fans coming in and, you know, attendance, and that's a different story. But he does seem he seems to think that they have fallen out of of, of love with the women's team, and I, I do question. I mean, I question why Man United got Skinner, but he's actually do, done all right, so I'm going to give him a pass. But I do question why Taylor is still there. Mm. Well, you know, you know, you've mentioned you know Beef being kicked out before Birmingham yeah. comes as a surprise because I thought the next manager to possibly go would be Gareth Taylor, so. Yeah. You know, um, it, it, yeah, you know, there are managers for me that are doing much better jobs that are, mm. you know, being kicked out of their positions uh, and tenures are ending. So I don't know how long uh, he can carry on. Um, but if he starts getting the results, he's going to get the fans back on side. That's, you know, it's a fickle game, isn't it, football? So, mm. you, you know, I don't know. Uh, we've got the January transfer window coming up. Um, maybe both teams can take advantage. Skinner hasn't 
uh, brought anyone in yet. Uh, Nath, I'll just finish the show with yourself. Obviously, we saw something slightly different in this game. Uh, we did see a bit more width, all the stuff that was quite out for. We saw a bit more of it. We were more pacey. Uh, just playing Fuso, uh, it was more pacey. Um, we did see just a different way of playing, didn't we? We did it. It wasn't. We played out for the back at times, but then we, we, then we obviously went, went long. We pressed the times, but then obviously we knew we, we didn't uh, at times. We kind of mixed it up a little bit. It's almost as if like he's trying something different or it, whatever he's done, it worked yesterday. Was you kind of happy with the way we set up yesterday? Oh, yeah, 100%. It was much better. It was, like I say, I think the crowd spurred them on, but I think, you know, like you say, it was, you were she wasn't for, you know, when we talked about um, Sophie, she was kicking it long. They were going direct, they were winning headers and then playing a ball. So, you know, Martha Thomas would win a header and then say Leah would run onto it. And that's what you want to see. You want to see them running. I was seeing him shout, run, run. Whereas we were seeing a lot of cutting inside and, you know, I'm seeing people, the has got a comment on saying, you know, why don't people call out players? But I agree with sort of um, Emma in that, it, it, you know, you got to play to the player's strengths, you know? Um, and I don't think Mark was doing that, but I think he's changed it. I think he is adaptable. I think we're seeing a, a lot better from Mark. And I think, I don't know, maybe it's sort of, you know, people putting pressure on him, saying this isn't good enough, this is how we want to play. And and, and I know City fans are doing that with Taylor, um, but maybe he's listening a bit more, Mark, because, uh, you know, I think I think the youth as well, the youthful exuberance of you know your Fuso and your and your uh, carry help because that's this is how we're going to play. This is how I've been told to play since since they dot. You know, Carrie's probably been pressing players since since forever. She'll she'll do that forever, you know. And I think that just you needed that little spark. So that's the players sort of taking responsibility. But I think we expected like a four three three. We didn't get it because that's how we sort of have been playing. We played a bit different way and we got joy and success from it so like i've said before i've said it in other places it's that's the that's where we want to be yeah and i want the performance against arsenal yeah we might not win because it was bad it was a bit at the start and if we probably started that way they might get two or three arsenal but if we have that determination i know we said it but determination grit we actually did have it you know and we all thought oh you're just saying that give over give over but no they had the you know i don't know whether it's fitness thing or what but they were running till the end and that's what you you want to see and uh, the passion is there um from our our team um and like you say i think that that bounce there is now for us we're we're on to it you know we talk about fickleness yeah people was, were, were criticizing skinner i was one of them but now like i said he's got a pass i feel a bit more confident going into arsenal you know this is what you want you want that togetherness that feeling that happy energy because happy energy makes you win and if he's unhappy you know you, you know even with us conceding that late goal against spurs it's led to unhappy and then the same thing happened at everton whereas this bang it's changed it you know let's go forward let's do good things now you know this is the level come on keep going we know we can do it that's it that's it we've come to the end of the show um emma um i know you was doing a show just before uh, we came on was that on the uh, man city women fan cast it was, yeah. <laughs> do you want to give that? Do you want to give the Man City Women fancast uh, a shout out? Yeah, um, thank you. It's um, if you want to listen to us, we're just talking about Man City, so different perspective, maybe from the city side. It's MCW fancast, uh, and it'll be out tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, tune in if you need to know anything about Man City. Just tune into that channel because it's uh, something that I listen to on a regular occasion. So um, it's a good way to learn about uh, Man City. Um, that's it then. So we're back uh, tomorrow, two shows tomorrow, uh, midday. Um, Anthony is with Connor um, on a show uh, regarding the build up to this weekend's fixtures. And then we've got the Friday Night Fan Forum. Um, and this hosted it this week because I'll be stuck at work, unfortunately. But there will be uh, plenty of guests keeping him company. Lots to discuss um, this Friday night with obviously the two games that we've already had uh, and the Arsenal game coming up. Uh, and then, of course, the Saturday Night Live with Ben and Matt. Always some banter on that show if you want to listen into a bit more of a informal chat on there. Um, and then let's roll on uh, Sunday. Um, hope to get that win against uh, Arsenal. Um, thank you very much for joining us, Emma. Really do appreciate it. Lots Always, of people thanks. comments. Yeah, thank you very much, Emma. And we'll see you. I'll see you, Nat, on Sunday. <laughs> see you later, guys. See you, guys.